When local resident B. Thompson saw members of Transition Primrose Hill painting over an historic mural created by Chilean refugees in the 70s, she was too late to save it, but highlighted its importance and tracked down the man responsible for the original mural, Philip Hartigan. Philip, who now lives in France, spoke to Camden Community Radio on the phone. He told me how the project came about. You go back to 1972, I did the bridge at Primrose Hill which is next to the wall at King Henry's Road. And then I did the wall on King Henry's Road. And I started an organization called the Fine Heart Squad, which was composed of artists and all kinds of different people to work with me. Well, we went very well with the King Henry's Road, and then we ran out of money. And so to finish the job, I got a 100 quid from Camden and a phone call from someone called Berger, who said, would you like to work with these street artists from Chile who were in exile and living in squats in Prince of Wales Crescent, I think it was, in Kentish Town. And so we worked together. In Chile, street art was officially recognized as a popular art form and a way of people communicating. So if there was an issue somewhere, they would paint a mural about it and then people would begin to discuss a discussion about the subject which was painted, you see. Mm. Street art was always used as a form of animation in the community. And that's what I believed, too, at the time. I believed it was a good way of triggering off people's ideas, rather than just leaving it to the newspapers or the telly or whatever, you see. So you'd have something much more vibrant going on. It was a funny type of time. You see, there was a lot of IRA trouble, and there was a lot of industrial trouble and there was you know problem 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 everything was conflict it seemed so i had this idea of doing something which had a, a message of hope really are you amazed that your work is still up there all these years later i always thought that that, that, that it should be like speaker's corner you know where you always have different things coming on and different things being produced different speeches different forms of expression you know like a speaker's corner Except it takes a lot of energy to do street art. It takes a lot of energy, physical and spiritual. That was the part that was um, that related to Chile. That was painted by the Chilean refugees. I'm with B. Thompson now, who's a local resident and who discovered that the wall was being painted. How did you discover that the, 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 the section painted by the Chilean refugees was being painted over? Well, I just came out of my house. There were two women there with white paint and they had practically obliterated the whole wall without, as far as I knew, any consultation with anybody that lived in the vicinity. Certainly I didn't know about it and I live opposite this painted wall and have done for 28 years. B, what, what was underneath that, that white paint that we now see, underneath there was the, the mural by the Chilean refugees. What, what did it actually look like before we, or before now when we can't see anything at all? Well, it was really faded and difficult to discern, but it had Chile written on it in big letters and solidarity. And then I think in one corner it had Chile solidarity campaign and some images. And it's true, it was faded and very shabby, but I still think it was an important piece of um, urban art. I would like, personally, David Burkett had came up with this idea which I think is terrific whenever a mural is reinstated on that wall whether it could perhaps de depict the um, the Chilean miners and that amazing feat of engineering because you know having gone from having their democratically elected government overthrown funded by the CIA all those people imprisoned and tortured and lost for years now suddenly Chile is in the news again um, for a completely different reason. Local environment and climate change campaign Transition Primrose Hill whitewashed the wall in preparation for a new mural to be painted by local school children and the local community celebrating the flora and fauna of Primrose Hill. Planning group member Anna Locke told me they had tried to consult local people. Had we had more time we would have gone through much more consultation. We did have... Um, stuff out at Primrose Hill Fair with, with you know, the mural project and asking people to sign up for it and any contributors and help and ideas. You know, I mean, the, the basic thing... And we did put a notice on the walls. We did, we put notices on the walls and we, you know, and we alerted people. 
you know, with hindsight, um, we were coming into some difficulties anyway because the condition of the war was really bad. So there's lead paint. So, you know, it was already kind of unfolding like it was going to be harder than we expected. Did you realise that the wall had sort of significance before you sort of whitewashed the, 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 Ch the Chilean bit? You know, as far as we were concerned, it had been there for a very long time. It was looking very, very faded. Network Rail didn't tell us, oh, but that was done by Chilean mm -hmm. refugees. If they had, you know, it wouldn't have even got as far as it got. So... Um, the answer is no, we didn't know the significance. But I think that, you know, we're quite proud that as soon as we realised the significance, we then took action and held meetings. And we've now got to know these people. And we've met Philip Hartigan. So I think we've turned it round. Transition Primrose Hill are still hoping to go ahead with their project once the wall has been pointed and the lead paint removed. Anna told me of their plans. I mean, we feel that there's potential to use that site so that you know we can celebrate um, biodiversity in our community it doesn't have to be about what's on Primrose Hill but because it's such a lovely preamble up to the hill and many local people go up the hill that way and also it would attract tourists you know I'd love to go to another country and go see a massive mural saying what flora and fauna was there